Okay, so welcome back to another tactical video. And today we're doing another national team. We're looking at my Norway. It's probably not the most interesting team, maybe, but it's one of the only ways you can play with uh, Erling Haaland. And you also have other very exciting players like Martin Ödegård and some supporting cast. So it's a really decent team. I mean, Haaland in itself, it's a good enough reason, right, to try out this team. So we're going to take a look at the tactics. We're going to take a look at how they play in real life formation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how I played using with this team in some online friendlies. So let's get started by taking a look at the tactics. Let's go. And as usual, let's start by taking a look at the squad breakdown. So here in the game, this version of the squad, you have 82 rated forwards, 78 rated midfielders, and then 72 rated defense. So obviously it's very top heavy. And the coach of Norway currently is Stolle Solbakken. He has a track record of being coach at Copenhagen. He also has coached several like other clubs. And with Norway, so far it seems like he has been using like a 4-2-3-1. Also call it almost a 4-2-2-2 with the attacking midfielder being able to play up top as well. The important thing about his shape is when they defend, they want to have two lines of four being able to defend very compactly and very high to try to force mistakes and then force the counterattack opportunities. So I think we're just going to start by taking a look at the instructions I have been using. So. I have been using counter-attack, short passing, we are attacking up the middle, once we get the ball, just bam, shortest way to, towards the goal, up the middle. And then I want to use flexible, because I like to combine counter-attacking, attacking style with flexible, if I have a team with the players available to, to do flexible positioning, and I think think we have it here with Norway. We have some wide players who perfectly fine can cut inside. They are not typical wingers. And we also have some midfielders who can push up and make some runs, being really useful. And with the support range, we're going with a two support range. And then defensive instructions. Since they are trying to win the ball high, they have a compact defense, but pretty high on the pitch. And that obviously can cause a little bit of problems if you face a good team with quick strikers and you have some good passers being able to hit those accurate long passes in behind the defense this is going to cause a little bit of problems for you but it's very effective whenever you are able to win the ball high because you are counter-attacking and you can just bam go towards the goal and that was primary source of goals so here we have frontline press containment we're going to try to force them wide do those risky like diagonal passes out wide and then try to intercept. Stack the middle of the pitch, make it difficult for them to play up the middle. And then we're going to have aggressive press. We're going to have a five defensive line and a maximum compactness of 10. Then for the advanced instruction, we are doing attacking fullbacks because on this team, you have Brynjör Merling and you have Jonas Svensson, who are very good, effective attacking fullbacks, uh, especially Merling. He can run up and down on the left side right there and cross it with the left foot. And then you have Svensson playing at Alkmar. He is a very solid uh, attacking minded player. And this will, the attacking fullback instruction will also cause the, the wide midfielders to come inside, which really helps out right here because you have Ödegård, who, although he likes to play on the right side there, uh, I think he is uh, more dangerous once he gets into the middle being able to dribble a little bit and make those passes. He can shoot from range and uh, no use having him on the wing. He's not your typical winger. He's more like a playmaker, right? And then you can have Jens Peter Hauge on the left side, more like a typical winger, but uh, he's also very solid if he cuts inside because he is right-footed playing on the left side. Uh, there's no issues with him cutting inside. That's what what he is supposed to do anyway. You don't want to go around on the left side with Hauge. You want instead Meling to come and do the cross on the overlap. And in the middle, you have Elionusi. And Elionusi can also play on the left side. And Elionusi is a uh, roaming flank. So he will anyway come inside, right? So I think this instruction is very useful in this setup. 
Then in the defense, since we are containing wide, whenever the opponent uh, has been forced wide and he wants to cross the ball, we just want to swarm the box, stack as many players as possible inside there to try to head it out. So that's basically the setup right here. And obviously Holland up top, 86 rated, one of the best strikers in the world, also in the game. And I mean, this guy on a counter-attacking team, You've seen all these goals he's scoring for Dortmund. He's also scored a lot of goals for Norway. Especially for Dortmund, he's, he's so effective on a counter-attacking team. And he also was very effective right here. Just wait until he makes the good run. He's in good position or his uh, defender leaves his marking. And he's wide open and then you hit it through to him. And he's going to be bam, through on goal. And it's going to be very easy to score with him. And then in the middle right there, uh, you have Nurman, uh, the Norwich player, who is an orchestrator. He can um, inspire some movement as, as well with his uh, inspire traits, which is really useful if you play it into him and he will set the thing in motion. And he also has the ability to hit these very good low through balls. So that's a very nice playmaker. And then next to him, you have Barige, who's more like a defensive minded player, the anchor man right there. But you can also go with Tushpi, you can go with Mitsche, who are more box-to-box -box kind of player, as long as you put that defensive instruction on them, so they don't roam too much up and down. And I think, you know, this is a fairly solid team, it's a four-star team, and uh, they have some key players, you can have a lot of fun, especially with this setup, if you face uh, someone in an online friendly who don't care about defense, who go on one, like one red, on full red, early in the game and you have this kind of setup and you're patient in defense try to win the ball back around the midfield tries to try to force mistakes and whenever you have a chance to go on a counter you can play a very nice counter-attacking game with this team you don't have to rely all that much on holland though because you also have players like sir lot and you have king on the bench who are very very good strikers both are rated 80 king and Sir Lot are obviously very different kind of players, uh, but King can also play out wide. I think King is very useful if you play him at left midfield, because he's very quick, he can dribble a little bit, he, he has very, very solid finishing, and because of his player style, when you go with a counter-attacking, flexible kind of mentality, he will make those runs and be dangerous on the transition. So he's very useful over there. And up top, I prefer to use these like more like target guys, Holland and Sirlot. Uh, although I did not use Sirlot all that much, but I know he has very good ability. And the defense, you know, it's so-so. Um, I don't think it matters all that much who you are starting in the middle uh, at the back. But obviously, Ayer is the highest rated. Then you have Nordweit, rated 74. And then you have Strandberg, you have Gabrielsen, and you also have Östigård around 70 so they are decent backups but uh, obviously nothing special in goal i chose to go with jarstein even though he's a defensive minded goalie you can experience a lot of problems if you are constantly hit with long balls over the top jarstein being a defensive goalie he will stay back he won't come out so you can consider using one of the other goalies if you don't mind uh, the skill gap because Jarstein is 78, and then you have backups at 70 and 72. It's up to you, really depends how much of a problem that can cause to you. So that's it for the setup, let's wrap up the video. So there you have it, my interpretation of Stole Solbakken's Norway tactics using this team you have available in PEZ. And uh, I cut in some highlights, and uh, as you can see, <laughs> Holland caused trouble for almost every opponent but he also missed a lot of chances but i mean it doesn't matter if you miss some chances if you score like four goals in a game it doesn't matter if you if you if you miss the fifth one right but uh, i mean the point here is having fun i think this team is definitely a team you can have uh, you can use for having some fun in some friendlies maybe play against a mate you know offline but it would be interesting to try it out in online divisions uh, maybe the lower to mid divisions uh, 8, 7, 6, maybe, maybe Division 6. I'm not sure how effective this will be in Division 6, but 
I mean, in the lower divisions, if you, you are a decent PES player, this is going to be a great formation for you to score goals and have some fun while you progress through the system. So what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback on it. And um, um, be sure to subscribe to be notified whenever I post some new videos. And thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you guys in the next one.